your right to vote. You, the prerequisite to vote is owning property. In some instances, you're paying some, you pay taxes, or you, you know, which, which there was no income tax back then, so usually taxes were levied on property. Um, most of the time, I think when this is referenced, I'm not sure how you, some of you may have learned it in high school, this is seen as a, purely as a, um, an old school, like the, the, the founders were, were snobs, they were elitist, right? They, they, they were men of affluence, and so they, you know, this is, this is, this is shown as, as part of the, them being limited by the time in which they lived, right? Ex excluding uh, slaves from equality or women from equality or even other white men who were uh, poor or who didn't own land. Right, and that, there's definitely uh, truth to that that's totally valid. If you look at, uh, for example, a statement right here by John Adams, that men without property have had no judgment, right? That seems like, that seems to be a, a real slight against those less fortunate. Uh, having said that, um, there is an element of this that is somewhat, you could argue somewhat, you know, for lack of a better term, progressive. Uh, this, is, this is an argument made by uh, many historians, one of the most noteworthy being uh, Gordon Wood, um, who you may not have heard of if you've seen the movie Goodwill Hunting. He is referenced in it. Uh, the idea that when Adams is talking about no judgment, men without property had no judgment, what he's saying is they are beholden to someone else, right? This is the secret ballot that we have where you go into a booth, you press a, you mark a candidate for office, no one knows what you did. They didn't necessarily have that back then, right? People voted more openly, like like what we would have, what we would, what we see in maybe the uh, Iowa caucus, or one, some primary stuff like that. Um, so if you did not own uh, your own piece of land, you did not have what the framers of our government called, what the revolutionaries would call, an independence, right? You were uh, renting land from somebody else, or you were an apprentice for somebody else. Or you, you know, somebody else uh, basically controlled you on some level financially and therefore may have the ability to twist you politically, right? You know, you show up, to, at, the, you show up at the assembly thing in the middle of town to vote and you know you support candidate A, but your landlord supports candidate B. You see your landlord there and when they ask you to raise your hand to vote for candidate A, what are you going to do? You know, you're gonna, you're gonna raise your hand and, and risk being evicted. What if you owe the guy? What if you owe this guy rent for the last two months and he's been letting you stay, you know, on the land, right? So there's there's an element of, of this that is saying that uh, independence, the independent vote, a vote that cannot be bought, is can only be entrusted to somebody who's a landowner, somebody who is a landowner, not some man, right? Because some places, at least, the the, the thing the thing about this too, um, is that. This is a society which is uh, of, you know, predominantly Anglo-Americans, European ancestry. It's a white supremacist society. There's no other way to put it. These are people that own slaves. These are people that have, have, have written, I mean, in the Declaration of Independence, Jefferson refers to Native Americans as savages, right? This is a racist society. It is definitely the product of its time. Um, so in a society like that, if you just say land ownership and you don't specify male or female or white or black, it's still predominantly going to be white men, right? Because that's who runs the society and who it's geared towards benefiting. Having said that, uh, the white, the fact that you need to be white, the fact that you need to be male in order to vote was not explicitly linked to voting. So you have examples of women in a colony, a state, when it becomes a state after the revolution, women in New Jersey who could vote because they had land, right? Blacks who could vote because they had land. 1800s, about 50 years after the revolution, when we have what's called universal manhood suffrage, all white men, rich, poor, whatever, can vote. At that moment, being white, being male, is explicitly linked to voting when, and property is removed, right? So on the one hand, uh, so Payne, you can see the quotation from Payne here. One part of society remaining affluent, and the other part, wretched, is unnatural, right? Payne, I think Payne believed that that allowing uh, uh, one group to participate politically and excluding another is inevitably going to lead to an unequal society. The vote is seen as a democratizing force, not just because you're voting in a democracy, but because you have a, 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 an equal say as everyone else. We each get one vote. Um, 
regarding the future of our country, the future of the laws that are going to govern our society.